Hello everyone, I'm here today to do a wrap up for the month of July um, and as, as always let's start with the stats and then we're going to, through the books. So this month I have read 8 books and 2485 pages. Uh, I haven't listened to any audiobook. Uh, and this is a little bit of like 80 pages per day which seems to be my new normal because it's, life is just busy um, and Alex is growing up and she needs more attention so that's where I'm at and, and that's fine. Um, the moods have been mostly reflective, emotional, some funny, challenging and informative. Then pace seems to be medium is 57% and slow is 43% which is um, not that common normally slow winds over medium but here we are um then page number it's a 50 50 splits between less than 300 pages and between 300 and 499 pages so i haven't read any really big books this month um so yeah i think it it's also the fact that these books are small is partly because i don't know why many of the books that i i have been reading for the read around the world challenge are small that's just how it is at the moment and uh, then the split between fiction and non-fiction is 25% non-fiction and 75% fiction uh, which is also pretty normal for me and like average throughout the year uh, and it's nice to see that this month uh, aligns with with that then in terms of genre by far the, mo the most that i have read is literary which is not a surprise and then magical realism short stories is not normal is normal for me um romance is also not um the most normal for me um history and historical um and fantasy also is not my normal thing but it, I always have a fantasy here and there so then format is also a 50 50 split between print and digital which is I'm very happy about I think I have managed this year to have a fairly um, even split between the two uh, which is something I was hoping for because before I have read a lot more digital in the last two three years with the pandemic and I'm happy that I'm shifting towards print again because I enjoy that more simply. Um, and then if we look at the number of pages read in July, you can see that like the first half of the month or so, I was very slow going. Um, I was just really busy and somehow not motivated. I was in a bit of a slump and then I made this uh, vlog about getting out of the slump. I will link it down below. Um, and that's where the peak in the middle comes from. And then there is another dip again because that, that particular week was super busy. But you can see that I have picked up the pace since then and I'm happy about that because I'm enjoying uh, following again some books um, I'm scrolling in my phone list so that's good uh, I don't expect to keep that that pace in the next month because I have a few uh, things planned my parents are coming to visit and I'm going to visit some friends in Germany so that I'm sure will take a lot of uh, reading time from this but uh, for now I'm happy with that how it, this looks like. So the first one I finished this month is A Question of Power by Bessie Head and I read this for Reader on the World project for Botswana and this is about a missionary school in Botswana and it has a lot of themes about, around colonialism and the apartheid even though Botswana didn't, didn't officially have an apartheid it's next to South Africa and South Africa had it and uh, from what I have read from the region that affected a lot of countries around it as well um, and it's very literary and it's very uh, it plays a lot with language it has a very small chapters and uh, different perspectives and it's very very literary um, Bessie Head is very um, renowned in in African literature so uh, not surprised that uh, it's very literary and I think it was it was very well written um, and I enjoyed it so um, yeah I'm glad I read it then the next book I finished was and the purple violet of Shantu by Nashani Andreas again for read around the world project this was for Namibia um, and this is about two women living in a small village one of them has a very happy life and a very happy marriage and that's the narrator of the book and the other one is kind of the opposite her husband was really violent from to her and he was um 
yeah he was not a good man and then at the beginning of the book he dies and it's kind of like what happens to her afterwards and how the village reacts to how she is not sorry about it um, and all of these cultural things going on um, story-wise it was very interesting i think the, the writing could have been better but uh, the story was interesting and i think it had a lot of cultural um, context to to the book so i'm i'm also glad i read this one then the next one i read was the body by bill bryson and this was in my ancient tbr and i finally got to it it's kind of big so <laughs> that's probably why it took me quite a little bit of time to get into uh, but this one is um, yeah so it's written um, very approachable every chapter kind of follows one part of the body so like for example like the skin or the um, digestive system or the lungs or and then there is also a chapter about cancer and a chapter about medicine and a chapter about death um, so yeah it's it's quite comprehensive i don't think it goes very in depth into anything there was times in which he started kind of a new topic within the topic um, and I could see that there was like one page left in the chapter and I was like there is no way you can cover this topic in one page um, so yeah that gives you an idea of how shallow in a, in a sense it is uh, but still it gives a very very comprehensive look at the body um, and it's also quite um, straightforward about what the science does, knows and doesn't know. Uh, it doesn't try to say, oh, this study shows this or this study shows that. And he's more straightforward than that. It's like, well, what does it happen? Nobody knows. These are the theories, this is the, the evidence to support which, which theory, but we don't really know. And there are many, many things that we don't really know about how the body works. Um, and I, I appreciated that honesty on the book, so overall I, I enjoyed it. Um, I understand that it could not have gone any deeper on any of the topics because this is supposed to be a popular science book and this is already quite chunky, so yeah. Um, but yeah, I might have appreciated a little bit, maybe at, at the end of each chapter, um, some recommendation of a popular science book that focuses on each of the topics and he did have some mention of some some of the the books that tackle some of the of the uh, topics and some of them I have read actually um, there was a, a mention of um, a, a tool a wonder which I have read a book from him being mortal not so long ago and reviewed it in my channel so for example uh, like that but it, there would have been even more approachable if at the end of each chapter he explicitly made a list of two or three books about the topic that are still popular science but go a little bit deeper into each of the topics I will really have appreciated that but other than that I think it's it's doing a good job of what it's trying to do. Then the next book I read is Girls of Riyadh by Raya Alsanea, which again is for my Read Around the World project, and this one was for Saudi Arabia. Um, and this is kind of, um, it follows four girls um, of the upper class in Saudi Arabia and kind of their lives and, and their, their love lives especially. Um, and it's written in emails so like epistolary um, but it's not directed to anybody so basically the idea is that this woman has an email list and every week she emails um, people a story about um, some girls um, in Riyadh that have like a love life and stuff and is trying to give a um, more representative view of the life of women in Saudi Arabia even though they are very high class and like they take summer trips to London and have London flats to stay and stuff so it's not like all kinds of women but like upper class women uh, and they still have a lot of limitations within their lives because of the society and the religion and what they are expected to do and who are they expected to hang out with and all of that kind of stuff um, and so it's written like 
emails that are stories about these fictionalized characters that are in real life friends of the person that is writing the email and at the beginning of each email there is like a paragraph of her saying oh last week you didn't believe me when I said that but I'm not gonna um, follow your your clues or blah 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 and it did feel a little bit like Gossip Girl like you know this narrator that is removed but not really removed from the story and it's uh, kind of interacting directly with the person that is reading or lo looking at the at the piece um, and I found that quite interesting I also the first like there is a pre prologue kind of thing from the author explaining that obviously translation has an uh, an impact in this novel because apparently there's a lot of uh, play on words and things like that and playing with dialects and all of these kind of things that are not translatable and actually that part that prologue apart from giving a lot of context and a lot more I think literary merit in a way to the book the, the prologue itself, how it's written, it does feel like slam poetry in some places, so it's very well written. I think that doesn't translate as much to the actual book, uh, maybe because of the way it was written, but it definitely is trying to be playful with the form, and it's trying to give um, an idea of, like, a more realistic idea of how people in Saudi Arabia live. Um, so yeah, I, I found this interesting and I would like to read something else from the author because I think that in a different form that is not epistolary we might have seen more of that slam poetry energy and I wanted to see that as well. Uh, but yeah, overall I, I recommend. And then the next one I read is Temporary People by Deepak Unikrishnan. Uh, and this is a collection of uh, short stories that are kind of sci-fi, magical realism, sci-fi um, kind of stories about um, immigrants in United Arab Emirates, more specifically Malayalam immigrants in the United Arab Emirates and how hard the situation is with those people. And there is, for example, one story that talks about how how many people fall from the scaffolding of buildings that they are building and then there is, in the story, there are these people that just go around the scaffolding finding people that have fallen and duct taping them together again so that they can go up and work again. Um, and of course it's like satire. There is also, like the last story was basically just pictures there was also a story that was just different words uh, for immigrants and they start being more and more derogatory as the like list goes on um, so yeah there are there's again a lot of play with language and a lot of um, literary merit to the stories particularly for me short stories are not my favorite thing to read um, so I would have preferred this to be a novel but other than that I think what it's doing is very interesting and for some reason I just I was not expecting it to be as literary as it was and I was pleasantly surprised and then the next one I read was The Making of the Modern Middle East by Jeremy Bowen and this is a non-fiction book about um, the Middle East, uh, basically. Um, Jeremy Bowen was a BBC uh, correspondent, I think BBC, um, anyway, a correspondent uh, from the West in the Middle East and he kind of goes through um, the things that have happened there since the 60s or 70s until the present day more or less and this was written in 2022 um, and there are some some things that have value in it uh, from this book there's I think a lot of discussion for example about Palestine and Israel which gives a lot of insight into the situation and why it is how it is um, stuff like that but I did feel like this book was focusing a lot on the news cycle more than on the any more deep um, thoughts and deep analysis than, than that um, it's kind of just a list of events and words and um, things that are interesting to the west rather than like more 
into the the people so there's a lot about Israel and Palestine there's a lot about Iraq there's about Iran and Syria um, but for example there is barely anything about the war in Kuwait or how these little nations um, in the Gulf were formed for example like things like that that are skipped because it's it doesn't make the news um, and I, I felt a little bit like we were just seeing the Middle East with this Western gaze and like I did learn about the history and the events that happened there in some of these countries but I didn't quite have the analysis and the in-depth thought that I was hoping for from this book. Um, so yeah, a little bit disappointing, not totally worthless, but a bit disappointing for me. And the next book that I read was The Bamboo Talk by Saud al Sanosi, and this again for Ritter on the Wall project, this one was for Kuwait, and this follows a boy that is the son of a Kuwaiti man uh, that had a son with um, the Filipino maid and basically he grew up in Philippines but then he went to Kuwait later on and it's it's very interesting as well because it deals with all the taboos in in Kuwait about the family not accepting him because he was the son of the maid and not accepting what he 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 represented but at the same time his dad and his dad really loved him and he tried to make the best out of the situation uh, but then he unfortunately disappears and then that's um, there is a whole storyline with that uh, going into the Kuwait Kuwaiti war which I didn't know anything about <laughs> um, so yeah I learned a lot about a lot of things uh, again this is probably not the most literary book you could find but I think the story is interesting and it's written in a very engaging way um, and I enjoyed it. And then the last book I read this month is Celestial Bodies by Joka Al Alharti. Um, and this is uh, again for Read Around the World uh, for a man. And it was also a winner for the Man Booker International a few years ago, 2019. Um, and it follows kind of a, a family in Oman and all the different like lives and things that uh, they have. There is a family tree at the beginning and we follow a lot of these characters and uh, what happens to each of them and how the societal rules affect each of them and it was again it was quite literary um, I suspected for an international booker um, prize winner um, and it, it does a lot of interesting things with the family and um, the interactions there were a few things that um, would I think for a western reader will uh, challenge the ideas that you have about Oman uh, and there is for example a family of slaves here uh, that is talked about um, which I mean this happens in like the 60s and 70s so not that long ago uh, but also it talks about one of the children of the story um, she was beaten by her husband and it, it, it was considered unacceptable to the family that she was beaten like um, and I somehow didn't expect it that because I I have the idea that um, it is a lot more acceptable in in these cultures to beat your wife um, but apparently it's not so I'm glad that I was like told that I was wrong about that assumption um, so yeah there was a lot of uh, different explorations like that and I, I enjoyed it the only thing I would say is that this jumps around a lot there are a lot of characters <laughs> that we follow there are a lot of story lines and times go back and forth back and forth back and forth and it's not a, a long book and that was a very disorientating and a little bit challenging and a little bit um, unnecessary as well I think uh, I didn't see the point of going back and forth so much um, and I, I think that either you choose to go back and forth in characters a lot and then it's interesting um, because we get a lot of perspectives and that was that was good I think um, or you go back and forth in time um, because there is some family secret that you don't want to reveal at the beginning and stuff like that 
but there was not really anything like that and I just thought that all this jumping around was kind of unnecessary um, so that detracted from my enjoyment because I think that the writing was good it was just like not very well constructed storytelling um, so yeah unfortunately that didn't work so well for me but I think that still like the writing is very good it's just the storytelling part of it was a little bit immature maybe or like I don't know how to describe but not the best um, so yeah those are all the books I read this month I hope you enjoyed this wrap up let me know if you have read any of the books what you thought about them and until next video bye